Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and a link in the info box once the video has rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. There are a couple of rules on the Hangout. Number one, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show, as sharing the show increases the live audience, of course, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Sleeping Warrior. Let's just uh, transition across to him. Hopefully we've got Sleeping Warrior with us. How are you doing? Am I here? You are here, yes, yes. Everything working as it should. I'm doing good, how are you? Very well. I pretty much only just walked in maybe an hour ago. Been down celebrating my mother's 70th birthday. Happy days. Coinciding with Mother's Day as well. Two for one, eh? Indeed, indeed. It was actually last week, but we didn't go because of the snow. So it was her birthday last week, but she got all of her presents in the post, which is a bit rubbish for her 70th birthday, but snow is snow. I bet they were all late as well. No, 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 they all got there on time. Well, mine did. I don't know about anyone else's, mine certainly did. You can't have a late 70th birthday present. Where's... Uh, Arwen should be out of bed now, shouldn't he? <laughs> out of bed? I should hope so. <laughs> Come on, Arwen, are you coming in? You must be out there somewhere. Good chat out a few just... people in the chat. Oxy, good to have you. Effie Viking, nice to see you. Netty Voyager, hello. Jim Morrison, good to see you. Ute, hello. John Watson says, oi, oi. Oi, oi to you too, John Watson. Roger MC, thanks for being here. Flattastic, good to see you. Nummy num, hello. Good to have you. And everyone else. I can't be bothered to scroll back through, so I'll say. Car Karen P. Coltrane, hello. Stop in traffic in my Rasta hat. It says, yo, yo, Nathan. Yo, yo to you too, stop in traffic in my Rasta hat. I haven't done shout outs for a while. People apparently like shout outs, so shout outs there shall be. So, did you miss me yesterday? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just having something to eat, so I'm gonna kind of kill two birds with one stone. Did I miss not not missed you? I just missed the abuse from the chat. Oh, thanks a bunch. Mm. I missed the show. I've got to be honest. I get withdrawal symptoms if I don't do a debate every day. I had uh, I was speaking to um, Mark Doxy, uh, the guy that did the um, the other side of the Isle of Man observation. Ah, yes, Mark. We were trying to go over the um, that claim of land unknown. And basically, it, might, it doesn't match either ball earth or flat earth. It's weird. Which one's that? <laughs> you know the guy that took the pot, um, the, one, the one that Jamie Brown searched and um, found. And you're saying and... that Mark, that's Mark's observation, though, isn't it? From no, no, several years no, ago. No, no, the one that me and Mark were looking at the one that Jamie Brown mirrored, and the one that Jamie Brown mirrored is the guy that was at Formby and at Crosby, and when he was at these two late locations, he claimed he could see Land Dudno at fifty miles. Now. I've been speaking to, what's his name? Rue Hiff. And Rue Hiff is adamant that he's not seeing Land Dudno. He's adamant that he's seeing Great Orm and only Great Orm. But he's not. He is seeing Land Dudno, but none of it matches up. And the only bit I can, I can conclus conclusively say is, well, I can see where Great Orm is. I can't see specifically whether it's Puffin Island and or others. Um, but we're definitely seeing Land Dudno because there's too much, again, it's like the Isle of Man. There's too much land in the image. And it doesn't make sense for it not to be at Land Udno, given that you can only there's only really one place that we can identify. So I'll uh, I'll I'll come through with that in a sec. Is that, is that the one where you've got to tie it down to a particular car parking space or something? Yeah. Right. Yes, I do remember now. So we might we might revisit that. But do you remember my first video on this channel? It was a challenge to Soundly. 
because Stanley managed to get himself onto Globebusters. I'm um, talking about Poncha Train and stuff. And Bob made a, a comment about how the eye is a lot more um, accurate than the camera. And, and Stanley made a claim that the eye is able to resolve a single candle flame from 30 miles. Now, 30 miles is as far away as Blackpool Tower. And I know from Hoy Lake, there ain't no chance in hell you are going to see, with the naked eye, a single candle flame. It's too far. It's too small. You're never going to see it. Never. Not even with a P900 on full zoom. You're never going to see it. It's just nonsense. So I, my first video was a call out, shouting out and saying, come on, where's the evidence for it? Well, yesterday, if we'd have gone live yesterday, um, I have an article which I'll bring up on screen. If I share my screens for a sec. <clears throat> and then click this, not that one. Hmm. Where is it? That one. Are we on? Yep. We have... Um... <clears throat> we have... How far away can you see a candle? This is published yesterday on the Daily Mail. So th 30... Uh, no, that's not the one. Hang on a sec. The Daily Mail? I got, I got this yesterday, and when I checked this, when I read it originally, it was done on that day. So who's that's the study, though? Sort of I forget, forget who published it. Who's, who's done this study? Mm, that's weird. Um, it's a university in Texas, I think it was in. Uh, okay. Texas A and M University, right? Okay. And basically, they found that a candle would only need to be 1.6 miles before it disappeared from view. It's too small; you can't see it. It's not small. It's not big enough to see. The findings suggest the scope of the human vision falls far short of the horizon caused by the curvature of the Earth, which occurs at around 3.1 miles. Well, we know that that's nonsense, Professor. Christianicus, or whatever, and Mr. Corona said they were inspired to look at the problem after seeing several adverts for vitamins claiming that the human eye can detect a candle flame at 10 miles away. When they said that they looked on the internet to find the answer, they found distances from 3 to 30 miles were given. Writing a paper on this open science site, they said the human eye cannot detect a candle at 10 miles or further, as some statements on the web suggest. We have shown that a candle flame at roughly 2.6 kilometers would have an apparent brightness comparable to a sixth magnitude star, which is really, really dim. The brightest stars in our sky, such as Vega, the second brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere, has a magnitude of zero. Using astronomical digital cameras, the researchers found that a candle at a distance of around 1,200 feet would have the same brightness as Vega. However, to their own eyes, they found closer distances that candle flames appeared to be as bright as Vega, even when it was, in fact, more luminous. The eye, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, um, the, the whole point of the article is that we can only resolve a candle at um, 1.6 miles, a single candle flame. Now, Salney claimed that he could see 30, and it's nonsense. Salney's just basically regurgitated what he's read on the internet somewhere and passed it off as truth. And I thought, there's absolutely... Because the minute he said 30 miles, in my head, I'm thinking Blackpool, Tower from Hoy Lake, that's 30 miles away. There ain't no chance in Ellie seeing a single candle flame. So I called him on it, and obviously I got not a single response from it. Um, he will have seen it, but he ignored it because it's on the internet, so it's therefore true. But in the real world, there's no way now. There's not a cat in hell's chance that you're going to see a single candle flame from 30 miles. The most we can see it, apparently, is 1.6 miles. And even then, I question it because it's still a long way. But in any event, um, this is what the claim now is. But I just found it interesting that they had a candle. Um, sorry, they were talking about the curvature of the Earth at 3.1 miles, which I found was nonsense. But, you know, it is what it is. Well, you know, from personal experience. So it is nonsense based on your own personal experience. Correct. So we know that that's um, a nonsense claim. However, they've done the, 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 the maths on it and said that we can't get anything at more than 1.6 miles, which I still think is high. But I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm going to do is do a bit of fill for me while I get rid of some food because I've got to have tea. I've not had anything all day and I'm withering away, you see. Um, and I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes when I've got rid of the hot stuff because a lot of it's salad rabbit food <laughs> no worries <laughs> tell us about where, you, where, where you've been then and what you've been up to dorset south coast a couple of hours drive for me not very far everywhere is a couple of hours from me if i'm honest but yeah it's been nice 
She went to a restaurant, had some food, celebrated a birthday, celebrated Mother's Day, drove home. Yeah, I don't normally stop in a hotel, but it was nice to have a couple of days with them. Good to spend some time with the family. And you enjoyed it too, didn't you, little munchkin? Yeah, it was nice. No complaints. But as I say, you get a bit of withdrawal and a hundred messages from people saying, are you doing a debate today? And you're like, well, yeah, I probably will. And I guess half of them that messaged you then messaged me after they didn't get a response immediately. So I was getting it too. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so you can't do it every single day. You know, life does have to interject. I, just, I still did an update yesterday, so I still put out a video. So at least people got to hear, you know, you're not doing, you're not doing a debate today, but yesterday we spent... I'm sure it was seven hours we spent yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I should say, um, going through what Ranty had caught. Because I was just in stunned amazement, and every time I tried to debunk it, I failed. And, you know, obviously you want to put this stuff out there having at least scrutinised it to a certain extent yourself. And in this instance, I thought, well, no, let's just thoroughly scrutinise it. And you were there, you know, you were not, not really interjecting as much as you normally do. You just seemed to be listening, but... You could obviously hear me and Ranty going back and forth with me going, no, 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 it's this closer stuff. No, 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 it's not. It's this closer stuff. And him going, can't be. And, you know, me getting frustrated because I'm convinced that the camera can't see as far as Ranty thinks it can see. But the evidence is there. You know, I can't deny what's on the pictures. But it just frustrates me, you know, when I can't seem to, you know, it just seems to beg a belief how far he's seeing. And he even had said that it wasn't a particularly clear day. Yeah, well, that's the thing that gets me the most. You just think... Okay, well if it's a, if it's a not very clear day, then you can't see as far. Mm. So I don't know. It's it's perplexing. Like like I said on the on the update, I'm hoping that we can put this out to people like GeoStreber, who can just go straight to um, Peak Finder and work his magic and just go. It's here you go. Here's the landscape. This is what you're looking at, because he is looking at it, and we can't seem to find it on Peak Finder. You know, either we're just totally inexperienced or inept with Peak Finder, or we're Correct, and this stuff shouldn't be seen. You know, it's one or the other. Well, the thing is, the further away something gets, the smaller it gets, right? That's simple rules of perspective. But what that actually means in real world, nobody can really calibrate in the mind because this is the reason why a lot of people, well, it doesn't matter. When something goes far enough away, it gets small enough that you can't see it, right? It, it, it kind of converges with the horizon. It gets squashed onto the horizon. It becomes the horizon, which really is a vanishing point. It's not actually... A hard line of where the curvature of the earth starts it's the point where things can no longer be seen but if it's big enough you'll see it and that appears to be what it appears to be happening but the reason why i wasn't interjecting too much is because i was looking at that what he was doing and basically it was all um supporting each other all the points he was catching up on or he was making each point that he would go to i was looking at it and i was thinking right well if this is right then the next bit of land will go up and then sure enough it went up and I was like, right, okay, well, if this is right, the next bit of the land will go up a bit more and then drop, and then it do it. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, each time he's doing it, it's it's validating itself. And I'm thinking, for this to be wrong overall, there's got to be a fail at somewhere, and it'll have to be an obvious fail. And every time you move to a new point, put a new line in, it did appear to be supporting it. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking what you're thinking. I'm thinking this is nonsense. This is too good to be true. But I'm also realizing that he's getting things to line up, and you can't. You can't dismiss something if it matches, right? You can dismiss it if it doesn't match. But each time he was doing it, and I don't know what your own interpretations were, but each time he was doing it, it was a match for me. And I couldn't say that there was stuff. I mean, sure, there were little bits that I thought maybe, maybe not. But on the other hand, the vast majority of it was right. And the bits that weren't, in my eyes, right, they were close as damn it. And given that we know that Google Earth's not necessarily accurate, we also know that it can be inaccurate. I'm just wondering how the parallax thing works because on such a distance, if things are beginning to look like they match and then you get a little bit that's not out, then your mind compensates for that and says, well, everything else up to this point has been pretty accurate and the next bit's accurate. So perhaps this is just a difference in parallax that's really, diff really difficult to map three-dimensionally. I don't know, but my, my interpretation of it was that principally and fundamentally, he was getting things lined up and they were... They were lining up. I mean, did, did you think that they were lining up? Yeah, it seemed to be lining up. I'm not going to lie about what I was seeing, but it just, you know when you've been led astray once by something like Google Earth, and you, you're kind of really apprehensive about what you're looking at just for all the reasons you've just given. You look at it and go, yeah, it looks right, smells right, tastes right, it's all in the right place, but there's got to be something wrong here. 
I mean, I'll just explain for the audience's benefit. What what Ranty has done is he's gone to a uh, point on the beach and looked through um, some piers, and we've presented this already. And the stuff is very close to having gone behind the curve of the earth, but we've still left with two or three hundred metres of mountain, etc., etc. We've got a, a valley that should be on the horizon in the globe earth and isn't. And we've said, well, it's very, very close to being gone completely. And he's gone, well, do you want me to go further back and just see if I can catch it from further back? And we've gone, yeah, of course. So that's precisely what he's done. He's gone about seven miles further down, um, just down the road, and just gone on to a, a different point and looked back at exactly the same mountains, which are colossal in terms of what they look like on a super zoom camera. And sure enough, the exact same view is viewable from seven miles away. Shock horror. But then you go to put the exact location into Peak Finder and there's nothing there. Like literally nothing there. And you go, hmm, <laughs> okay. So Peak Finder says there's nothing there, but there's these great big mountainscapes that we're looking at and we can't line them up with Peak Finder like you'd normally just do because they're not supposed to be there. So you go, well... Okay, this kind of makes sense because it is a flat earth and you can see them from seven miles further up the beach and match up the, quote, peaks with the actual mountains that you're seeing. So why the hell would it make any difference if you go seven miles back? But then in terms of what Peak Finder presents, it makes a world of difference. So then you're left with, okay, well, we've got nothing else to go by. Let's go by Google Earth. Let's see if we can match it up from there. And he draws the same sight lines in, pretty much, as he was drawing in from the... Um, from the point that he was seven miles further up the beach when he's looking underneath the pier. And he's drawing in the same sight lines to the same mountains. But I'm scratching my head going, this can't be right. This can't be right. It's a huge distance, surely not. But they're, they're massive mountains. So you think, well, why not? You know, they are pretty huge and they are greyed out by a lot of cloud and they are starting to fade to nothing. He's having to mess with the, the resolution and the, the colour saturation and all these things to get it so that you can actually see them. But you can see them. There they are. Which makes me think that on a clear day, they'll just be exactly the same view, but a bit clearer. That makes sense, because they're big things that he's looking at. But nonetheless, you go to Peak Finder, you plug in the data, and they've gone. They're not even there. So that's why I said on the update, it seems too good to be true. And, uh, you know, as much as I'm trying and going, okay, there's got to be a more logical reason for this. There's got to be something they can pull out of their hat to debunk us with. Because... There they stand, these huge mountains, and they shouldn't be there. So there you go, there's where we're up to, and like I say, hours and hours and hours of, of ranty drawing in sight lines on Google Earth, because he can line it up really nicely. He's got all these wind farms that he can tie down to within an inch, because that's where they are. Um, and he's, you know, they haven't moved, so he can really put in tight sight lines and match up exactly which direction he's looking at. And as Anthony says, he draws a line to these mountains, and there's slightly lower slightly nearer mountains in the foreground but they just don't seem to match and as much as i want to force them to match and go no you're only seeing 40 miles it's these nearer mountains you're looking at it doesn't seem to match it seems to be the stuff that's further away that he's seeing and you can't really argue when he puts in these lines and you look along the sight line and go yeah that looks like what you're looking at but surely not surely not it's just too yeah. far <clears throat> shout out Shout out to Karen B in the, uh, she's lurking in chat, she won't speak, but she's listening. Um, but what I did, I spoke to, what's his name, Geo Strieber about this, and he said, do you know that you can change your elevation height? And I didn't know that. And he was telling me that when he does observations, he can see stuff on um, Peak Finder that, he can see stuff in real world that Peak Finder's not there. So he has to change the elevation height. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, if you change the elevation height, then I can identify the mountains. And I'm like, so you're, hang on a minute, you're telling me that you can see mountains that don't appear on Peak Finder until you change your elevation. I said, does that not cause you a problem psychologically? He said, no, it's obviously a problem with the software. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, I can't see very much when I'm at zero. He said, I have to lift the camera up, the, the observer height up to see it. I'm like, dude, if you can see it in the real world and you're at zero feet or whatever, then you are not on a ball. Does that not cognitively call you a dissonance issue? Cause you a dissonance issue? Um, he seemed to flip it off like it was a, a software. Hey, Fireball, ball. can you say hello? Or are you just going to immediately kick everybody? Sure enough, he's kicked the only guest immediately. <sighs> I'm sure these guys do it just to cause me five minutes of work. Ugh. There will be a short intermission while I fire up a different hangout. I'll fire up the battle at Battlefield Hangout. Got these various different names. 
that I've given all these various sort of overlay hangouts because no one actually gets into the hangouts run by OBS, so it's just an empty hangout. But so that I can fire them up quickly, I've got pre-made ones. This one's called Flat Earth Debate Battlefield. Okay. So I'll wait about five minutes before I um, stick the public link out again. Hello again. <clears throat> Disruption minimized. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'll wait five minutes before I put the link out public again this time. I'll just share it in Skype for the time being. What I'll do is I'll send the link to Matt Doxy because he was online a bit about 10 minutes ago. It's work, isn't it? People are paying the ass when they do that. Thank you, Fireball. Thanks for joining. Yeah, so my point then, I was saying, um, GeoStreamer says that he regularly finds it. And I'm like, does that not cause you a cognitive issue? <clears throat> In that he has to change his elevation by X amount of feet. Otherwise, he can't see these things. That's a problem. That really is a strong indicator that the Earth's not a ball because you have to compensate for the curvature of the Earth on the Peak Finder app to be able to see stuff. That makes no logical sense. But he didn't see that as an issue. He saw it as, eh, it's obviously a software issue. And I'm like, a software issue that you're expecting us to rely upon? Well, yeah, it is a software issue. The issue is that the software thinks it's a ball. No, I, I get that. But he didn't get, he saw it as a software issue as in it was a mild error. And I'm like, no, Geo, it's because you don't, we don't live on a ball that you don't need to change your elevation hugely to see these things. That is a, That in itself is a flat earth proof. And he didn't, I don't know, he didn't even realise it. It's ridiculous. Who are you dealing with cognitive dissonance? You, know, you got it right first time. Because hmm. he doesn't lack critical thinking, does he? He doesn't have it. He does. Oh, you can't accuse GeoStreamer of not having critical thinking. I would say he does have critical thinking. He's looking at things critically. You know, well, how, much, how much more would you want? But, you know, he's no. still got cognitive dissonance. You know, no, you're just certain things bias. he blocks out. You're describing bias. You're not describing critical thinking. Mm. Bias is where you only see the one side of the argument that you prefer. Critical thinking is where you critique you to the side that you're on to see whether it's valid or not. So he's not applying it against his own model. He's only applying a bias in favour of his model. That's not critical thinking. The biased critical thinking isn't critical thinking. Is that what you're saying? A bias. Yeah, he's, he's got a biased opinion. That's not critiquing his own position. So no, I wouldn't agree. He's able to critically think. He can, he can, he can challenge. He's good at articulating challenge, but he's not good at critical thinking. I don't think he's got it at all. <clears throat> the fact that you've got to change your elevation up is an issue. Yeah, I had to have this conversation today with my niece. She's only very young, but by the same token, she was basically saying, you know, she believed something. I couldn't remember what, and I was like, well, why do you believe that? And she's like, because I saw it on TV. I was like, well do you believe that there's flying dinosaurs like in your cartoons? And she was like, no, but they're cartoons. The guy on the news said it. I was like, just because the guy on the news said it doesn't necessarily make it true. And then I held up her, we were in a swimming pool, and she, she held up this float and it was blue on one side, yellow on the other. And I held up the blue side and said, this is red. And she went, no, it isn't. I said, yeah, but I've just told you it's red. And she said, well, yeah, but I know it's blue. I said, well, how do you know it's blue? She said, because I've looked at it, and I can see that it's blue. I said, right, but if I was on TV and I damn well told you, and I'm older and more experienced, that it's red, would you believe me now? And she said, no. I said, well, how is that any different to anything else they tell you on the news? And she was like, hmm. I said, well, that's, you know, you've got to think for yourself. You can't necessarily just accept anything that people tell you just because they're in a position of authority or on the bloody news. 
But there we go. That's, you know, people are pre-programmed to accept everything that's on the news. The news says it's a globe. BBC spins a globe and you accept it's a globe. And obviously a real world example of that would be the Hillsborough disaster. If Hillsborough disaster killed 96 football fans when Liverpool played an FA Cup semi-final <clears throat> over in Sheffield. And basically it was never on the news to say that the, all the fans were innocent. It never said that the fans were victims. It said that the fans caused it and it was down to being drunk and not having tickets and um, uh, uh, too many people outside the stadium. It took 20 years, 20 odd years, before there was an official inquiry that actually produced the evidence that proved that it was nothing to do with the fans. It was bad bad management. It was bad policing on the day. And basically the fans were victims. And once it went on the news to say that, people then accept it. People don't look at the Hillsborough disaster anymore and think it was it was the pickpocketed fans that were urinating on dead members of the dead, dead urinating on the dead and pickpocketing the dead. Hello, Aaron. Is that really you? Yes. It must be. I've not put the link out. I'll put the link out now. It's been a good five minutes. <coughs> so now that it's been on the news, people now accept that the Hillsborough disaster was in fact a cover up. But until it went on the news, people were just laughing at it. Well, not laughing at it, but people were like, "Yeah, people did die." However. Was it actually the fans? People thought it was the fans because the newspapers and the, and the television told them it was the fans. It actually took it to get onto the news for, to tell them that it was down to a government cover-up caused by Margaret Thatcher. That was the problem. And only at that point would people accept it. Despite all the evidence showing, it was poorly managed. I mean, the stadium didn't even have a, a valid safety certificate. It was re revoked the year before, yet the match still went ahead. I mean... That in itself is an issue that people just think, well, how big an issue is it? Well, can you imagine driving with no car license, right? It's going to be a bit of an issue if you have an accident. Same kind of thing. So you're going to get your hands, your fingers chopped off kind of thing. But at the end of the day, it has to go onto the news before people will consider it to be truth, which is the reason why 9-11 people accept it because they've seen it on TV. Well, two planes can't cause three buildings to collapse, right? We know that. We don't need to see it on TV to know that that's nonsense. Yeah. That's what they showed us on telly. Three buildings collapsed. Well, there were actually like four or five buildings that collapsed, but three buildings that were like massive that required like a huge amount of structural damage and they only had two planes. People have a problem with that. People don't think that's an issue. And I'm like, come on, wake up. Yeah, but you don't need to, even if you wake them up to the lies on the news, most of what I'm referring to in terms of the globe is subliminal. You know, most people don't pay the slightest bit of attention to the clock with the globe. They just see the time or see the countdown or whatever. I don't watch TV anymore. I've no idea what the BBC currently present, but I'm sure they've got a globe somewhere. You know, they, they will. I don't doubt that for a second, even though I don't watch. I'm certain of that fact because that's what they do. They put a globe out continually. It's always there. Well, I think people are None so badly TV indoctrinated by that which they see on TV. You could basically tell them anything on TV. Like there's a Tesla Roadster floating around in space and they'll believe it. I think it shows more about the ability, the lack of ability for people to think critically and the over trust that they get from stuff on TV. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's embarrassing that we live in a world where people can't distinguish reality from fiction. And I look at this Roadster thing and I think it's blatantly, obviously fake. Yet there are people that genuinely believe it. Red's rhetoric believes it. Well, I'm, I don't know whether he does or not, but he pushes it tr as truth anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's just that it's a part of the language, though. You know, people talk globally. I saw an article about a guy that claimed that he'd seen um, the Tesla Roadster floating around in space. And then basically he'd got some <clears throat> live to the minute telemetry data telling it telling him where it was. So he got his camera, put the coordinates into it, and sure enough, there was this light floating around in the sky that wasn't on a perfectly straight line. It seemed to be floating. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you, you really think that you're looking at a Tesla car? <clears throat> Can't see the car. You can just see it's a little light. But he did honestly believe it. And I'm like, you have absolutely no way of knowing what you're looking at there. It's just a light. Could just be a firefly, you know what I mean? That's right on top of the lens. <clears throat> you do realise that you're clashing with globusters, don't you? Say again. 
You do realise that you're clashing with Globebusters. I, d I didn't give it a second thought. Oh, they're, they're starting Sorry, much later, if, you, right? if you're missing Globebusters, 106 people. Tune into them if you're getting bored. Are you a TV watcher, Arwin? Me? Yeah. Oh, God. Although, yeah, I do sometimes uh, check out what's happening on Dutch television. But, yeah, it's it's moved on far beyond what I'm interested in. So, like, say, 10 years ago, I would regularly watch TV, all kinds. But nowadays, yeah, I don't have really have a, a television anymore. So I just have an internet site that has the, the standard Dutch channels. And I sometimes take a look, but, yeah, most of it is just... Yeah, <clears throat> or like painfully filled with propaganda. Oh, oh, sorry, I need to interrupt. <clears throat> I um, I was having a conversation with GeoStreamer offline, um, a text conversation, and he was telling me about something called the Etvos effect, which I knew about, but I thought the Etvos effect was to do with um, traveling up and down in a north and south direction. Um, and basically the claim is that the Etvos effect is that as you change your position relative to the spin of the earth, your weight will change. You will get heavier as you go one way, you will get lighter as you go the other way. And it's a direct cause of centrifugal force. No, I thought it was north to south because that would logically make sense to me that you could do that if you did it north to south, because as you went north, the centrifugal speed or the circumfer circumferential speed would be slower. Therefore, you would it should gain in weight because your centrifuge, centrifugal force that's being applied against you reduces, therefore you would should get heavier. <clears throat> if you sit on the equator, you should be at your lightest, you should be at your heaviest at the North Pole, because the centrifuge, that should be the position. Yep. Um, now, I, when he told me about this, I thought it was north to south, but he's actually told me about this, and he, according to him, it's east or west, not, not north to south. And I was like, what are you on about? Surely, doesn't it? Isn't it actually north to south? And he was like, "No, no, no, um, you got it wrong." Um, I said, "It doesn't make logical sense for it to be <laughs> east to west." That yeah. would be very weird. Then, like the rotation of the Earth would be very different. Well, given how how slow they tell us it actually is on the one hand, sometimes they say it's like a thousand miles an hour, but you can't feel it because of relativity. And then other times, um, that when it suits them, they'll say that it's so slow that you can't even detect it. Right. This is what his response was. And I said, it makes no sense that it's uh, east to west, right? And he was like, no, it absolutely makes sense. And this, this is what he says, quote, let's say that you're on the equator. This is the simplest case. If you're on a spinning surface, there will be a centrifuge when you counteract gravity to a certain degree. But if you're moving in the opposite direction of the movement of the surface, the centrifuge, the centrifuge will be lost, will be less. And I said, so you think the rotational speed of the planet can be exaggerated with motion east over west? Utter, utter nonsense. And he said, if you're moving east to west, there will be less centrifuge, as you and you will be able to measure that. Yo, P Mars. Hey, P. Good to have you. Hey, guys. Uh, that, that wouldn't work, I think. No. Because the air would basically, well, it would definitely have to move. Well... Uh, against the rotation no no a constant stream for, for that to be able to work like that and it doesn't really oh, we've been sniped hey jared how you doing doing good uh Ooh, just nice. like to i uh, just like to correct you on something riley the etos of effect is east to west you're a moron or something you're a fucking it's... moron <laughs> well, troll fest wow. begins <laughs> and, and it's not because you are static and move in that relation. So what you were trying to describe is if you weigh yourself at one point, move east, weigh yourself again on the same latitude, you'll weigh different. That's not the toss effect. It's if you weigh yourself while you are in motion, that mm. is when the effect takes place. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. I haven't got to that point in the conversation yet. <clears throat> the, next, the next line, I, I said, so you think the rotational speed of the planet can be exaggerated with motion east over motion west? Utter nonsense. And the response was, if you're moving east to west, there will be less centrifuge force and you will be able to measure that. 
if you have the same speed as the planet, but in the opposite direction, the centrifugal force will be completely gone and you will only feel gravity. The difference is 0.34%, but it is measurable. And I said, utter nonsense. And he said, why do you think, he said, why do you think that does not make sense? I said, I understand your logic, but the slow rate of the spin of the earth is not realistic. It, it, it is not realistic to think that it's measurable. I do agree though. If you claim it's measurable, it would prove rotation around an axis. Off you go. And then obviously that's the challenge. If he thinks that this would prove that we are rotating, then I agree. If you point it east and west and you travel one way and then do the same experiment and travel the, the other way, you should negate and you should exaggerate a centrifuge. And um, I don't think it'll make any difference. So um, when I found out about Flat Earth, maybe what, almost two years ago now, and today I weigh a lot less. Is that because of a placebo effect of me not believing in gravity? No, it's, the Earth <laughs> slowed down just for you, P. I mean, I'm interested to know how you got on with John LeBon because I, I listened to one of his podcasts and he was saying that you, you joined and, you know, kind of had a falling out with him um, to a certain extent. Yeah. So what happened? Oh, he was just, I felt he was very rude to me. He just sat there and he tried to one up me the en entire time. And anytime I made a comment on anything, I had to provide all these sources and citations when it's pretty unreasonable to expect that of someone, you know, it's not like we had a topic that we had time to prepare for or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't remember everything I read or listen to on a documentary off the top of my head and cite it perfectly. That's not a computer. So he's just using these like cheap tactics to uh, make me look bad and I didn't appreciate it. So I told him that in a rude way. <clears throat> Do you think it's unreasonable to, to ask for citations and proof of what you're asserting? Is that what you're saying? Because that sounds like what um, you're assuming. We were just having like a conversation, you know, we were, we were just talking and what well, he was constantly doing it, like, like any little thing I would say, like, it was just to the point of being really annoying to and he was just doing it to like one up and try to make me look bad. And then he was, he's like acting really arrogant for no reason. He's, he, I don't, I think he's a dumb, at, a dumb person and he's illogical. I mean, I find yeah, that interesting because so. Jamie Brown leveled the same criticism at um, Sleeping Warrior's feet because he asked for exactly the same thing. So he'd ask him for a citation or evidence, and when there was none, it was criticised as, oh, I don't like this whole giving the evidence thing. But I, this is, sounds slightly different because it sounds like you were reciting chapter and verse just without necessarily knowing the author or whatever. I don't know, man. I like... I. I... I, I I provided evidence, but it's like I there were certain things I talked about that I didn't have a I, I didn't have a source for. So it's not like I didn't have a source or citation for anything I said. But you know, I don't know. I I I can't remember everything. That's all my point is. Like I can't. Some sometimes like I'm not I'm not prepared. You know, like I didn't know what we were going to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like we weren't just talking about flat Earth. We were talking about like vast amount of subjects. So. I don't have like a file cabinet with all like this the stuff I've researched on hand or anything like that. So I think it's kind of unreasonable to expect someone to be able to just remember everything verbatim and shit like that. Which excuse my French, what he was doing. I think he was just trying to make me look bad. I guess that's what I'm saying. I, th I thought I didn't appreciate it. Fair enough. <clears throat> but you were rude to him as a consequence, so you took the bait and were rude, was rude to him. Yeah, he's basically baiting me to be rude to him, and I took the bait, whatever. Like, anyone who follows him is kind of dumb, in my opinion, because he says insane things like dinosaurs are a hoax, nukes are a hoax. He doesn't believe anything in history past, like, 80 years. Uh, he thinks no one died on 9-11. That's a joke. Okay. That's not what he says, though. So. He doesn't... I've never heard him say that. What I've heard him say is, I have not found evidence to suggest that people have died on 9-11 there may have been people who died on 9-11 i just can't find evidence for it that's what he actually that's asserts so i don't think he ever has asserted no one died on 9-11 well, if that's what he asserts that shows his poor research skills because it's really easy to find evidence for that well i don't want this to turn into a 9-11 chat but you know without it being that particular subject because it's a flat earth related subject did that come up with him 
No, it didn't. I didn't even know he had that opinion. I wish he, I would have. I would have grilled him on that. Well, he doesn't. He has, he has his own view. So he has Le Bon Earth or whatever it's called. And that's yeah. his model, essentially geocentric <laughs> in nature. But ultimately speaking, when I've discussed it with him, he always says the same thing. The map is not the terrain. So that's kind of his view on things. But he ultimately knows that space is a complete farce and the ISS is a joke. Apollo missions were a complete joke. You know, he knows all of this stuff. But, you know, whether or not he would call himself a flat earther, I think he's pretty much certain he won't. I don't know if he's an, a CIA agent or not, but he certainly promotes like a CIA agent themed nihilistic beliefs so I, yeah, I'd laugh. whether he's an agent or not he's helping the cia no he's not it's just the blank. same uh, it's just some guy what are you talking yeah. about well you know i've done research into like the cia in the 60s was promoting uh, uh nihilism through their propaganda and john lebon promotes nihilism and so whether he knows it or not he's helping the cia promote the propaganda they were doing in the past and presumably still doing today well, it is kind of a, a a general known fact that the CIA spends most of its time just uh, putting out misinformation to mislead people. Exactly. Get them off the trail of the truth, whatever it may be. And there's not a really a clear narrative in that. There are like narrative programs for specific scenarios, like the whole alien legend thing truth is out there and everything and uh countering flat earth probably and maybe even flat earth itself i think they're hello well iron realm media have how you doing controlled opposition all are now in hello can you hear us iron realm they're, yeah, for... they're pretty well known to basically have two different programs in opposition of each other to dominate the narrative. And I think that is their biggest trick. So For, bring out a narrative and then bring out the counter narrative. And then they pretty much control that entire area of yes. focus. But being and a, a nihilist or an anarchist or... Neo yeah, I, I, I can provide citations CIA. and sources for my claim here. Read uh, The Cultural Cold War, The CIA and the World of Arts and Letters by Francis Stoner Saunders. Lots of evidence, scientific studies, etc. But I'm not disagreeing with that part. I'm saying that, you know, someone could be a hello, flat earth. Can you say hello? You're my word or something. <laughs> Shout out to Shroomy. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, you can be a, a nihilist or an anarchist or a neo Marxist or whatever you like. It doesn't make you CIA, is my point. No, my point. I didn't say he was CIA. I said he was promoting the same CIA propaganda that they were doing, according to this book that I read, that I just cited. I think how the CIA tends to work is they basically have a very smart, charismatic type of guy that knows a lot. They insert that into a certain type of group whenever they arise to help shape the entire narrative and make the decisions to gain control of that. Hey, Nummy Num, how are you doing? Can you hear us? Hold Hi. on. Hey, Nummy Num, good to have you. We've, Hi. Also, got, we've also got Adam with us as well. How are you doing, Adam? Evening, guys. How are you all? You all right, Nate? Very well, very well. Good to have you. Is it you that joined on Iron Realm? Yeah, I was just trying to jump in on the server we're setting up. So uh... Sorry. That was me that kicked you because you didn't say hello quick enough. I had no voice. That's why I jumped out, mate. I was I was fully expecting to be kicked, sir. So uh, it's a <laughs> you were. pleasure to be kicked the first time by you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And also, Nummy Num, really pleased to see you again. I, I love your oh, comments, thanks. mate. No, nice to see you as well. Good to be here. I, you guys normally don't do them at an hour that I can uh, join, but good opportunity. Awesome. Hey, anyway, we, you were talking about that spin of the earth thing. And that was pretty interesting. I'd like to continue that conversation, it actually being flat earth related. <clears throat> I believe that if you move anywhere on the earth, whatever direction it may be, that that would help scales give out a different result. Because if you have like a train and it would be closed off like the air inside would be still and it would move at a steady speed then doesn't make any sense that things would weigh differently really because it, 
Like, hey Jim, can you hear weight, us? Weight <clears throat> of things are used to weigh things. Hello, Jim. That's how scales work. Yeah, Arwen, I was saying like, would the scale itself would be affected the same way, wouldn't it? Exactly. So, it is. There is a weight to compare the weight of the other thing. That's how scales work. Yeah. Or they, or they use like pressure systems, but as long as it's in an enclosed uh, environment, it doesn't really matter if it's moving or not, as long as it's not accelerating, because acceleration is known to actually do shift. Uh, well, let's just say the point of gravity, it shifts it slightly. And we even uh, had a, a show about that, uh, as a, uh, that as a subject in a show uh, way before this. And there was some video demonstrations, of like how acceleration actually moves helium balloons inside of a of a car as yeah. it accelerates, that kind of thing. But if it's a steady motion, then everything should just weigh the same. Yeah, in terms of weight, no matter what, if the scale was ex was uh, accelerating as at the same as the thing being weighed, it wouldn't affect it. Yeah. Hey, Nomi, you said in the chat I didn't provide evidence of dinosaurs, but there's pictures of dinosaur bones. So what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I think John Lebon was challenging you saying, could these be fake? And you're just like, look at the pictures. Look at the pictures. Yeah, he, there's it, pictures it of dinosaur bones. What? There's pictures of dinosaur bones. Yeah, I'm aware that there's pictures of alleged dinosaur bones, but like... You, so what? So what's your point? How do you know well, they're that, actually the dinosaur bones? Alleged. The pictures oh, are hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, Can you just have Nummy Num and P Mars? I don't want everyone to gang up on P Mars just because he's got a different belief to other people. So just keep it calm. Look, I'm not, an, trigger I'm not an expert on this dinosaur topic, but I'm just saying that John LeBond's argument. Okay, if you ask me for evidence and I provided friggin' pictures of dinosaur bones in rocks, how is that not evidence? I'm not saying that's not evidence, I'm saying it's not proof. Oh my God! You're, you're arguing semantics. I, this no, is I'm not arguing semantics. It's yes, you are. No, 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 what, no, that's what ridiculous. No. You're ridiculous. Could I, could I, I jump know, in? No, no, no. What is ridiculous? Let I me mean, respond for Christ's sake, okay? Yeah, yeah, but what you're saying that John LeBond was parts. asking you. The question that John LeBond was asking you was, could these pictures be fake? Well, what the? That's stupid, though. Well, no, it's not stupid because Why? people take evidence of things all the time, like the moon landing and stuff like that. So you do have to scrutinize hey, Lottie, hey, beyond simply what? the existence of a photo. If you hold see on, a photo of you, hello, Lottie, Lottie, can you say hello? You see a picture of a unicorn. Does a unicorn exist? It's do like paleontologists exist. I mean, give me a break. You're an idiot. All right. Okay. Well, I'm just I mean, obviously, you can fake any photo. But you know what? There's okay, well, a way to discern truth right by our, you know, do other sources confirm things? If multiple sources are confirming things, then it's probably true, moron. What the hell is wrong no need, with you? No need for the outcome. You have no discernment? Chill, chill. Like, really? No are you a child? Are you a toddler? How old are oh, you? No need. What well, an embarrassment you are. You believe in the movement? Complete embarrassment. Calm down, P. There's no need. Just have a civil discussion. Oh, okay. There's no need. You can disagree without getting hot under the collar well no it's okay i mean i guess this um it triggers him for some reason but it's fair uh, enough it's passionate about funny. dinosaurs good for him you're about to you cry know. that's fair like enough. you're about to cry p mars oh, come on no ad hom no need come on don't I'm going, I'm, you are making me cry for humanity with your stupid logic yes <laughs> well i was just reiterating what i heard on your debate with john Lebon, and i'm not <clears throat> i i have not done the research in depth on these dinosaur things, so I don't have a hard then statement. About. I'm just saying that Bertrand Russell you said people wouldn't be able to think, and you are a fine example of that. Okay, P. Mars, no, I, you are I, I do have like an, an alternative option. Uh, like I believe that there probably were pretty freaking large reptiles at one point or another, but could it be that they're not not actually the ancient dinosaurs as have been told to us? That they might just be a more recent type of large reptilians, that are that they're they're just saying that they're really how, that they are ancient. Recent? I think the dates. Uh, petrification actually... is proven to not actually take that long. 
could they, they, they could be lying, lying about quickly. the dates, yeah, but they yeah, definitely they can't be lying that. about the bones. They're they're physical, and we see them on Earth here. It's okay, but some of them, you, some of the bones. But it is also well known that even in museums where dinosaur bones are being displayed, that they usually make uh, well copies of them. And usually, it's rarely a complete yes. skeleton, so they there are, actually there are fill examples. in some blanks, basically, with there how are they theorize it would look like. I will but, admit there are historical examples of people faking dinosaur bones to get popular, but I mean, exactly. that's like taking a few examples and making it the whole paleontologist industry. It's like you're, you're cherry picking information. There's a there are you can't act like there isn't credible sources that dinosaur bones exist because there's plenty of that. Yeah, but, Not necessarily. I mean, we have you seen it oh, when? Please, oh please. No, I'm just saying that if if there is collusion within these institutions to fake other things in science, then it's not such an incredible leap to imagine that they were faking something like that as well. I mean, if they the, these universities are also holding no. up the, hang, uh, hang the things like the moon landing claims, and you know, none of no. Uh, tenured professors will come out and challenge this thing, so it 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 uh, it's a strike against their credibility right there. The fact that they won't even address these the the criticisms of some of NASA's well, claims. There's no legitimate criticisms for the moon landing, so why would they address them? There's Maybe lots of there's endless. Are, are you kidding me? There's no legitimate criticisms of the moon landing claims, really. Like, I mean, maybe I, I haven't been, heard. I haven't heard any. Well, no. Even if they even if they turned out to be, uh, it, it did turn out to be true. The, there's lots of criticisms that are legitimate. The fact that they lost all the original telemetry data, all the original footage, the original specifications to build the modules and stuff like that. I mean, right away that puts the claim into, by any scientific standard, it's a contentious claim on that basis. So, you know, these people aren't calling that out. They're not, and they're not willing to engage in a real critical discussion of the reality of these things. So I think that that puts their credibility in jeopardy personally. Like there's clearly, uh, you know, that they're, that they protect each other. There's a sort of protectionism of the claims made by universities in general, by the people who work in them. And I think a lot of them, they're, you know, they're not necessarily aware that that's what they're doing, but nonetheless, that's what they're doing. By the way, P. Mars, I th I thought that you actually had some doubts about the moon landings. I, I heard you in the show before actually mentioning mentioning that you thought that it was probably fake. Kind of surprised that you're now picking the other side all of a sudden like this. Yeah, it's called intellectual honesty. Um, I never really. Hello, Lewis. It. How are you doing? Can you hear us? Well. About intellectual honesty, like, <clears throat> I just want to, I don't know who said that, but I would just yeah, ask Lewis. That, Lewis, do you think it's possible that they could have faked the moon landing? Oh, I just kicked him I off. I thought it was a fake it, Lewis because he didn't say hello. Said that and not to the extent that you people are claiming. I think Sorry, it was fine. real. I think it was real and fake. I think they actually went there and then they created the whole conspiracy hoax movement at the same time. But why, why in God's name would they do that? Well, if that's the case, well, that's, that's still very interesting, and it still warrants uh, a lot of investigation. By you know, it, it's still like a, a very relevant subject for uh, the public to inquire into. If that's the case, like if they're really doing it and then presenting us with all fake evidence for what they actually did, that's just as worthwhile a thing to do research on as if they just faked it. But I mean, I think that if that's, if that's, if you're at the point of rationalizing it like that, I mean, I think that the idea that it was fake has to be at least on the table for you. But, but that must be one very, very elaborate and bizarre conspiracy to actually have went there, then make falsified data and evidence, putting in huge efforts to actually do that. And then, to work towards later admitting that they haven't done it. Like the only reason that I can even remotely think of that could be possible is that they actually built a giant base there or something. And then to cover that up, say that they never actually went there. 
But that's, that, that people, is like really cuckoo land conspiracy. Well, it, it, gets, it goes along with the nihilism I was talking about earlier. Like, I think they had, um, they're trying to make us lose faith in the system. Like, they had uh, Clinton get his, you know, wiener sucked in office to make us lose faith in the presidency. Then they railroaded Bush in to make us lose faith in our voting. Then they but, have this, but this that's thing is all, so freaking they're, they're making a, They want to destroy the current system, so they're using the conspiracy people to make us lose faith in the current uh, system and have well, us nihil destroy nihilism it. Nihilism isn't the word for that. That's just political demoralization. I mean, nihilism is more of a, like, a metaphysical... No, but, no, but this, P. Morris, like, this is such a long-term planned thing. That could never work because there are people in the government that would that have access to all the declassified files there would always be groups that would just wouldn't go along with it it would be it's just in it's intangible it's an intangible plan so, so we are coming up on approximately one hour left on this live stream hope you're enjoying the debate thus far please do not chat uh, chat spam it's really frustrating so please don't spam the chat feed oh, for god's sake if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside the show while it's live and a link in the info box once the video has rendered. Most importantly though, if you'd like to join the debate, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the Earth. There are a couple of rules, please don't swear, if you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please Please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream as I watch a massive amount of spam go up. Marvellous. Please also share the show as sharing the show increases the live audience, which in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. There is approximately one hour left on this live stream. That system. Like then spreading chaos works to some degree, but not if you're actually going to break down the system that you ride on. No, that's the thing is the CIA and hey, invalid. All those power Can you hear players, us? they're manipulating the Can you system hear us to inquiry? their benefit. That's what's going on. They're not trying to destroy Yeah, but how it. are they benefiting from basically cutting away their own foundation? Are you sure that that's what they're doing and not just making it appear as such? No, because we're arguing about the idea that they that they really landed on the moon, but then they gave us fake evidence, right? But I'm just going to say that if you if that's going to be then the they must have something really big to hide there. But I yeah, doubt but, that that really happened. Yeah, I'm here. Don't hey, remove me. I'm not going to. Now that you said hello, <laughs> well done. Any further with that? It's just somebody. Sleeping chode did. Somebody needs to provide evidence that um, that that's the case, right? Like, like you know, that, is there any evidence that they? So, what is Pimar saying that the, he thinks that the evidence is fake, like the the video footage? I'm saying photos. they're using. They want to change the system. They want the system to change, and they want this one world government shit. And so they have to make us lose faith in our own government, our own science, etc. Right. Yeah, but they use so, but, but, but that why, system. the so world why government think... uses the space agencies as well. So that doesn't okay. make any sense. No, but let me just continue with this. P Mars then. So what's the evidence that they did go to the moon if the evidence that they've presented to us is fake? Because that's what you're saying, isn't it? You're saying uh, that they presented yeah, us with all fake evidence, but they really did it as well. So what what's the evidence that they really did it as well? Jim Panda, Panda, check out his, his channel. He's got a, so, so Jim Panda saying that all the evidence is fake and that, but that they really did it. Is that what no, Jim Panda? He's got a different that? opinion. He's got a different he's opinion than me. But. Well, I'm asking you for evidence for your opinion, not for Jim Panda. I'm saying like if I'm you think that all the evidence, evidence. They, yeah, got but got is this your evidence. position? Is your position that that all the evidence is fake, but yet they really did it? Is that what you're arguing? Not all of it. I don't know. I don't know how they did it. I'm saying. They really, they really did it, and they created a land. Can you all mute if you're not talking? So, so what evidence? That that loop, uh, sorry, no, you, sorry to interrupt. Details. Sorry, bear so with me. Evidence? Sorry, bear with me a moment, Nummy. Bear with me. Can you all mute if you're not talking because someone's causing feedback? Nobody mutes. <laughs> no, it, I'm not I getting know it, I know it's not me causing the feedback because I have a headset on. Sure, but I'm trying to narrow down who is. Okay, is it me? No, it was coming from P. Mars himself when he was talking. 
Yeah, okay. I, I just needed to Two establish jars. it for myself by everyone muting, and then hopefully if two people talk and there's still feedback, it's one of them, you see. But there we go. Brilliant. No, here's, the, here's the thing, though, Nathan. We know it's not myself. We know it's not Numby because we know it's not our... Who gives a crap what you know? I'm running the damn show. It. Shut your <laughs> mouth and do as I tell you, we stupid lost, idiots. If I tell you to mute, mute, you stupid man. We Why are you telling me how to run this you. show, you stupid idiot? I'll run the show. You do as I tell you. If I say mute, just mute. Dickhead. <laughs> okay, P. Mars, I just wanted to ask you, what evidence do you think is fake and what evidence do you think is real about the moon landing specifically? I mean, I haven't, I don't, I can't really answer that because I haven't looked into it. So, it's, but, Okay, but you think some of it's fake and some of it's real? Is that your position? Yeah, it's just an idea I had. I thought, thought it kind of made sense. Who cares? It's his opinion. Move on, dude. No, no, because I'm just trying to sort this out because it's an, you know, that's a that's another possible angle that you, you think it's question. completely fake. You think it's yeah. completely fake. So without a funny thing happen on the way to the moon, what evidence do you have that they didn't go? I don't think rockets can work in a vacuum. So that's your opinion. You don't think that. OK, what else? No, they, well, they can. Uh, that's your evidence. I asked for evidence, and you said I don't think something. So, well, do you have any evidence? Testing yeah. rockets in a vacuum proved that that doesn't work. I'm talking about the moon landing, Arjawijan. So, let's I talk about the moon rockets landing. Don't, rockets don't work in a vacuum, which therefore precludes all these space travel. What games. evidence do you have of that besides your feels? No, I don't have lots of evidence besides my feels. It contradict that it's contradicts. Uh, okay, the, so you have no evidence. I was just saying? in the middle of a sentence about explaining the evidence, and then you cut me off saying I have no evidence. That's kind of strange, isn't it? So go ahead. I was going to say it contradicts the laws, the sort of principles of physics that are that describe how gases behave. There's contradiction. No, it doesn't. Sure, it does. No, it actually it doesn't. Does. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't actually. Yes, it does. Yeah, actually, it does. I don't. You know, I like. I'm not sure that it's worth getting into a long-winded conversation about that right now, but we could do it sometime. because yeah, you have no evidence. You oh, just feel have, that no, rockets don't work in space. Propulsion Lots based on gas expansion, it, it's proven in many in a great variety of ways. Okay, you, where, where's your proof of that, R. Widgetin? Yeah, you your don't need to get rude, Timothy. <laughs> Okay. I'm just asking but where your proof is. You just made an assertion. Out there. There's Love plenty of proof. videos out there that have been shown. Oh, videos on YouTube. Yeah, uh, with conspiracy on, YouTube. on the people title. actually doing oh, okay. the experiments. Where is that? Do you have one of them? Because you said there's many of them. So do you have one? No, look, I'm not, no? go I'm not going oh, okay. to be your little proof collection boy. For okay, well, stop asserting things without any proof. Years. Thank you. I've been talking about this so many freaking times. I'm so, not you're talking about a lot of things like the earth being flat. Yeah, doesn't mean that it's go true. And collect it. No, no. The, where's the proof that rockets do work in a vacuum? I mean, is there tests that show that they do, that they can create? There, no, there isn't. They've never, they've never shown that rockets can lift off and and reverse <clears> and you know, they, reverse thrust you know, and all of that in any kind of controlled. You don't situation. believe in satellites and all this kind of stuff. So, what what kind of evidence do you want no, me to provide? No, let's not migrate like, the subject. Independent, no, an independent the test. Like they, NASA made a giant vacuum facility, and yet they have absolutely no footage of them testing any of these rockets or reverse thrust propulsion or anything like when that. When did they make that vacuum chamber? When did they make that? In the like seventies or sixties, I think sixties. Okay, so you want mm -hmm. video evidence of them seeing if rockets would work in it? I would like to see. And some... without that, you don't believe in it. Is that, I, I'm is that saying the case? That it doesn't make sense. It contradicts the under, the testable principles of physics dealing with vacuums and gases. And NASA, what they so they developed all these rockets and they never tested them in their giant vacuum facility and then made videos of it why didn't they do that so is this is this an absence of evidence argument because i hear a lot of those no, you don't I'm, you don't have a video of them testing it therefore it's no, false you're asking me to prove a negative that rockets don't work in a vacuum and i'm asking you to prove the positive you do, i'm i'm asking you to prove your assertion you said that they don't because of right? physics and i yeah, said well no actually yeah, physics the does of say physics they work are i'm saying that the principles of that. physics that deal with vacuums and gases so there's there's no rocket science tree, like there's there's no rocket science or any kind of physics that say that rockets work in space there, there's nobody that says actually that rockets heard work in NASA space NASA define how rocket propulsion Works I just asked a simple space. question. They never talk about it. 
the rocket the rocket Tsiolkovsky, Tsiolkovsky, the Russian pseudoscientist who wasn't even a physicist who came up with the uh, rocket equation that's used to that they claim mm -hmm. somehow supports the idea that rockets can work in a vacuum is fraudulent. And there's no tests that can be replicated. There's no empirical tests that can be replicated to show that rockets would work that way. So let me ask you this. Do you believe in space? I don't know what, I'm not sure what's going on up there. I, I'm, okay. I'm open-minded about that. Cool. So you're full of assertions and I don't know. So very well. No, I think you can go and do all know. kinds of research in rocket science. Yeah. And go and see if if I have done modern kinds. science is saying that rockets don't work in space. I'd love to say it. I'd love to see it because well, I'm pretty I'm, sure they I'm, they say that they do. Yeah, I'm sure that they say that they do. It doesn't mean that they do. That's not proof. No, no, no. You guys were saying that there's no that there's evidence that there's they don't work in space. It goes against physics. Well, I'm saying that there's yes. physics that actually says that it does work. So what are no. you talking about? Well, okay, we could hash this out like in in more depth, but you know, I'd like to do it maybe. I'd just like to like get my notes together because I. Um, There's I, no I, notes, man. You 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 believe the Earth is flat. Well, no, no, you don't I mean, know if space the, exists. I have all the like information pertaining to the arguments about the actual physics. It's just that I haven't. You just don't have them in your head. It. No, I haven't looked at it in a year and a half. I'm not. I'm not a physicist. Well, listen, I, I got a question for Tim. Do we agree or not agree that a um, a drone will not work in a vacuum? I don't know. I've never tested. Okay. Shouldn't well, if you if you think there's any possibility a drone would work in a vacuum, then you you're just so absolutely clueless. What is a drone? Are you talking about a uh, something with the kind of like uh, helicopter style uh, propel? Proportion, I wouldn't think that that would work, but a drone could be something else as well. So it's kind of a malformed question. No, it's a straightforward question that most people understand. A drone, Tim. Could a drone have rocket proportion? So that was my next question. What's the difference between a drone, which pushes against the air, and a rocket that pushes against the air? Are you really asking that question? I'm absolutely asking you that question. <laughs> What's the answer? You know the answer to that. I'm not going to play stupid with you, okay? You can play stupid with me, but I know that you know the answer to that. What about people in chat that don't know the answer to that? I don't really care about people in chat. I'm, I'm here testing the assertions of people saying that space doesn't exist and rockets don't work in space with absolutely no evidence. And they believe the Earth is flat and they don't think that space exists. So, hey, Could you share my screen, please, sir? Well, there's on the on the sure. on the uh, flip side of that, there's no evidence that rockets do work in a vacuum or that space exists. Check the internal chat. Check the Hi, external Sanders. chat. Can you say I hello? linked two videos showing a rock solid rocket engine igniting in a vacuum. <clears throat> cool. Saying there you go. There's your absence of evidence argument smashed. Good job. That's all I you need to do is just ask smarter people than you. That's all you need to do. Okay. Instead so of asserting you, things, you're being this presented. doesn't exist. Therefore, the you're Earth being is flat. very well, presumptuous. Maybe you yeah. haven't looked hard enough. Maybe you haven't actually read the title of the video. Oh yeah, I haven't seen any flat Earth videos that assert things uh, you, for days. You obviously that are untrue, haven't really read the title of the video, have you? Before you bladder mouth. Okay, well, I'll tell you this rocket video that you've linked. I'm looking at it, and it's an invalid experiment because as soon as they as soon as the propellants from the rocket enter the chamber, it's no longer a vacuum. So then they're pushing on the gases that they've created through the uh, combustion process. And they don't do a control experiment showing how does this thing work if we just leave air in the chamber. So it's not a, it's not a scientific experiment. <clears throat> and, yeah, we'll, we'll... You can see that the thing only actually starts to work once the chamber is filled with gas from the rocket itself. Like, it's not a vacuum chamber. But it's not. It's it not wouldn't ignite relevant. in the first place when it's at vacuum if it couldn't do it at all. What are you talking? About? It wouldn't ignite. Well, they bring exactly. their own uh, oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. don't. They have an enclosed chamber. They ignite the gas. It forms all of this exhaust. Then the the vacuum chamber is no longer a vacuum chamber because it's filled with exhaust. They're now using that as their uh, source of external pressure. 
after a few seconds, yes. But the yeah, well, initial, and that's what you see in the initial, experiment that it's not until after ignition, the gas comes out. The no, no. Well, if it's in a larger vacuum chamber happen. and the vacuum actually yeah, keeps on pumping, the we're then the it fact will that show that it nothing, won't work. There's no external pressure to gain a force to accelerate. Oh, oh so you want to argue where the force comes from? In yeah, you rotation. need an external force to make something accelerate, according to Newton's first law. Where, where, all right. Propulsion so how is does, about pushing. How does a rocket it pushes off rock. something. If there is nothing, if there is a vacuum, then there's nothing to push off onto. Yeah, you can't. That there's, is basic, there's nothing to accelerate. basic physics. Yeah, there is. What? These are tired claims, guys. Seriously, no, they're not tired rockets claims. don't work they're in space. Exhaust, gases, rockets LP. do not work in space. The exhaust in a theoretical space. vacuum where there, 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 there would be, I didn't, I didn't. What did you ask me if no I believe gravity, in space? Would like that. I don't know what's going on up there. Spin so wildly you're lying. around its axis. So you don't know what's going on up there, but you know that rockets don't work up there. Well done. Well, I'm well saying done. that rocket from what we. No, well have. done. No, no. You, see what you're just look what you have to do. You're just using sophistry. Like you're no, I'm using your words against you. No, you're misrepresenting Welcome to the Timmy what I said hour. and then trying right. to create a straw man from Numby, it. Numby, I have a quick question for you. Do you understand how an internal combustion engine works? Yes. All right, where is the so, force you know, being... Hang on, hang on. Where is the force being generated in that engine to cause the piston to move down? Inside the piston. Inside the piston itself is what's pushing the piston down. What do you mean pushing the piston down? Pushing the piston down is the is the external pressure of the atmosphere. The, no. Pushing it down. What do you mean down? You pushing mean, it like it means uh, the, the the explosion inside the chamber. Yeah, the explosion the inside the chamber, chamber is happening. Yes, yes the combustion the chamber. Piston. Then that ex, then that expansion happens, pushes the piston down. Now a rocket engine. Wait, okay, why are you saying? Uh, hang, on, hang on, hang on. I, I don't. I, I need to hang understand on, what you're hang asking. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Let's walk I'm, through this. Yeah, I'm asking so, you. So an internal combustion engine has a combustion chamber. Were you aware that liquid fueled rockets also have a combustion chamber? Yes. So what happens when you ignite something in a combustion chamber? Is the force just going in all directions with no net push? Or can you control where the pressure is released in order to create thrust? It goes in all directions. <laughs> wow. Oh, no wonder why you get it wrong. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, the one truth. No, it's true, Marty, true. Rather. I mean, How are you doing? I, okay, you could find the... Yeah, I had to interrupt you guys. Sorry, so I didn't get kicked. Yeah, no, good on you. Way to do it. It's kind of rude, but well, continue on. There's a lot of snipers coming in and a lot of people who want to just join to disrupt. So if you don't say hello, you have to get kicked immediately when there's a good conversation going on. And there is currently. So you're right, you are rude, but I'm glad you did it anyway. Nice to have you. So, uh, thanks. So, so that's the thing. When you look at even just the basic diagram of how a rocket engine is physically put together the different components that actually go into creating the combustion and then the exhaust the fact that there is a single exhaust point which creates a lower pressure at that point is what creates the thrust of a rocket engine it creates a higher pressure at that point not a lower pressure The higher the exhaust is at a higher pressure than the air that's in front of the rocket. That's what would make a rocket work within the atmosphere. Right. I'm that's not that. talking about the outside of the combustion chamber. You said that it makes a lower pressure at the at, exhaust. At the exhaust valve. No, it there, creates a higher pressure the at the rest of the combustion chamber. No, it creates a higher pressure. That's how an engine would work. Like that's how it. Uh, or why don't we? Talk about like a, a jet engine, for instance. It creates a higher pressure at the exhaust. So, um, in the impact Why of science, lower pressure. you're saying lower pressure. So you you clearly have no idea. I'm talking about the combustion chamber itself. In the impact of science on society, Bertrand Russell yeah. said many yeah. people would sooner die than think. In fact, they do. What does it say about the? 
conspiratorial bias. The what? Conspiratorial bias, what you suffer from. Uh, it talks about modern methods of propaganda. You, you, like this would be used to basically brainwash people and that, that science would be confined to the governing class. And like I don't hear a lot of people in the conspiracy realm, alternative media telling people to study propaganda and ma mass psychology and talking about the CIA and the propaganda in the 60s. It's funny. Well, I would think that you should be thinking about that, PMARS, considering you think the moon landing was real. Don't you think that that kind of falls into the purview of those sorts of... Uh... Go watch that. We've already been through this. You don't have any I evidence that the moon landing wasn't real. We've already been through this, remember? Right, there's lots of evidence. Oh, okay, can you name one? I just one? was talking about it. Rockets don't work in a vacuum. There's evidence. Okay, well, you haven't proven that. So do you have another yeah, one? Well, I'm not, we're not going to be able to prove that right here and now, obviously. Oh, uh, okay. Well, well I have, I have one, uh, like that one thing that about the moon landings, and that is there's no approach well, footage. There's only well, we a footage right now once is that, um, they get to the surface of the moon, the and then you see so that thing. Could tell us why but a you don't actually would. see them approaching the moon. Are you talking about a propeller drone? Yes, Tim, a propeller drone, the thing that we all buy. Thank you. A propeller requires an atmosphere. Yeah. Right, so contrast why a drone doesn't work in a vacuum to why a rocket does. Totally different thing, dude. And you know, you know, you're just you're just being coy. You're being, you're right. trolling, let, dude. Let me like ask, usual. Let me ask a question to Numi Num then. Num, uh, would you agree that um, a drone does not work in a, va a vacuum chamber? Yes, of course. Do you think that a rocket should work or should not work in a vacuum chamber based on the? Uh, is it comparable or not comparable? I think it's comparable. It's I not it's exact. Comparable. I don't think. I think that there's. It's a little bit different, but that uh, generally speaking, yes, comparable. That you you require an external pressure to okay. uh, to I drive agree. the thing forward. So, so let me ask Jared, Jared Buto. Um, do you think that I'm a a drone is comparable or not comparable to a rocket in a vacuum? Not comparable. For Based what on it's how the actual engines creating the propellant function. One requires an atmosphere, the other doesn't. Go on. What more needs to be said beyond that? Well, a no. rocket also a, requires a, a, a propeller, propeller requires an atmosphere because it moves the atmosphere based on the rotation of the blades. A rocket engine, being a self contained combustion, does not require an atmosphere. Yeah, but when the blades spin that creates the thrust, what's it going to be thrusting against? God, dude. No, no, no. Here's the thing, though. Whether that the chemically you, that induced pressure you or motion-induced pressure, no, no, it let me requires ask you, do you agree something with, to propel you agree with That's why it's called propulsion. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's a you, propeller no, or if it's a combustion gas. Law of motion, doesn't matter. Do you think... Do you, do you guys think Newton's first law of motion like is relevant, holds up? Do you disagree with all known rocket science? Oh, yep. I'm asking you a question now. You're not going to answer No, I was it? just asking you a question. Well, why don't you do answer you disagree with rocket science? Yeah. But I'm saying, okay. do you agree with Newton's law of motion? That's all that needs to be said. Uh, what school question? did you go to? Yeah, that an object let, stay let us not dare question, question rockets. Rockets. Did you go to the school of YouTube conspiracy the theories? Ones, right? well, see, we how, can't... see how, you're, see how you're, you won't actually deal with any any questions coming in the other yeah, direction? We, it's we, we can't be sure of any of Isaac Newton's science because he was a satanic witch who worshipped the sun. Sure, I agree with that, but I'm asking these guys. <laughs> they agree. Well, I'm saying we can't be sure of any... I don't see any reason to be sure of his science just on his word. I'm just asking these guys if they agree with Newton's first law of motion, because I would imagine that they probably hold it to be a fact because of the way that they think, right? To date, Do you, you agree with Newton's possible. first law of motion or not? That, okay. is, that, that an object will stay to at rest date, or in motion unless date, acted on by an external date, force? To date, to date, it has been demonstrated as true. Until information comes out to disprove it, it will be accepted. Okay, well then, if it's not, his law, first law of motion is that an object will stay in motion or at rest unless acted on by an external force. Yes. The so, law what's your point, dude? Internal force in the rocket. The rocket, it's an internal engine an internal combustion engine refers to internal forces so a thing can't move by internal forces otherwise we have to throw out newton's first law 
And that's where uh, the can, exhaust valve can comes in that you keep wanting to get. No, no, because we're still talking about axis, external force. It's as simple as this. Is, is, the, is the rocket creating an external force to itself, or is it using an internal yes. force? It's creating an external force via the exhaust valve and the exhaust housing. No, but that's not what external no, force. That refers. gets actually sucked into the vacuum of space before it can actually be used. Does, pressure, thrust does pressure move from high to low or low to high? It moves the vacuum from is high extreme. To low, but if there's it no gas, yes, yes, right yes, away. So instantly. Yes, no, you got it. You got it right, right there. You got it right, right there. Force goes from high pressure to low pressure. The high pressure is in the exhaust housing of the rocket. No, no, so no. What, no, no so no, why no. would you the force it. automatically just reverse in space? No, no, you're wrong. You said force goes from high pressure to low pressure. Force does not go from high pressure to low pressure. Gas goes from high pressure to low pressure. Which, would be, require... when, which would be the exhaust, which the exhaust moving in one direction creates the opposing force in the other, which actually propels the rocket. It's very basic. Why do you want to conflate it? This is the CGI Osprey guy. Muted, no, me, them sound like joined the CGI Osprey. Osprey. Either he's been muted or he's been booted, one or the other. Has he been kicked out by his own sock? Are you there, no, me, them? Good. So, Arwidgen. Uh, uh oh, more people are going. No, nah, it was. I believe it that vacuum numb. sucks. The the flat Earth has got you don't? out. Are you still there, Nummy Num, or not? Let me see. Wait. Yeah, I'm here. I was just muted. No worries. I wonder how long I was muted for. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, Nummy removed uh, Sleeping Warrior. No, the, I didn't. The sock, I didn't. Nummy. The sock, no, Nummy. No, the sock version of you. Okay. Well, yeah. Who's that? That's weird. So anyway, would you, where'd you get your schooling from? Was it uh, YouTube videos, conspiracy related? I'm just wondering. Who are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, Nummy. Oh, I went to university and I've since used various different uh, resources to educate myself further on these subjects, including books. Were you in any kind of field videos. with physics or anything? Pardon me? When you went to schooling, were you in any kind of field of, of uh, physics? I've taken a first year university physics class. Okay. But was it, was it intended for STEM or other people? Other people? What do you mean? Liberal arts. Non-STEM people. No, it was intended as STEM. I mean, I, I did like half a biology degree, but I didn't finish it. But I took some physics and chemistry as well. I mean, I'm not claiming to any expertise in this, though. So I don't, it, that's not, it's irrelevant. I don't consider that to be important anyway. So I'm just when, saying, did, when did the head injury happen to take you away from all of this wonderful education that you had access to? He started watching YouTube videos, conspiracy related. It's usually the I'm case. I'm vaccine injured. It's really a sad world for these people. No, it's yeah, pretty sad that, that, that that's all you got all is the, the character assassination. How did I character assassinate you? <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll just let you guys. I, I didn't know a question was. Okay. If you assert things okay. towards me, I'm going to use your words against me. So, did I character assassinate you, or do you want to retract that statement? I'm not playing this silly game with you guys. Okay. Well, that just, that's your answer. No, yeah, I did not I character assassinate you. Thank you. Another yeah, assertion. You called, yeah, you, you assumed that he had a head injury. That is really a nasty, Tim. You are I didn't say person. that, did no, I, Orbit? Yeah, yeah, you did. I, well, Jared no. did. Holy crap, oh, you guys can't okay. listen. Yeah. Wrong person. No. Oh my god, guys, it wasn't Tim who said it, it was the other guy. You guys are so stupid. Yeah. Can't you even see yeah. it? Yeah, no, no, no you're wrong. It only fell on your head. You, you are. Just one troll with the other. 
You guys are retarded. Yeah, well, that's because you're all the damn thank, same, and you all bring the same arguments. The you talk in the same nasty <laughs> voice. <laughs> all the time. It's very <laughs> easy to mistake this you all. This is so two beautiful, two beautiful two shit idiots apart. What kind of no, idiot Kessler couldn't thing. tell Timothy from this other asshole? Right? So what are you guys talking about? I know about? people that... Uh, uh, your three conspiracy theories are trolls. I understand that. I've been around long enough. Yeah. Conspiracy theories are like so dumb, guys. Like, there's no possibility that any conspiracy could ever take nope. shape. No, that's not what I said. That's that's question what the government says. Excuse me. Excuse well me. Done. When did I ever say that? Did I ever say those words? No, I'm, 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 I'm actually uh, satirizing Tim now. Uh, yeah, he's just funny, me. funny. I've never heard Tim say those words. So where is this <laughs> yeah. coming from? No, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Tim oh, so you're making shit YouTube, up and pulling, so it right. <laughs> pulling it out of your ass. All right. I'm making shit up and pulling it out of my ass, but I'm doing it in a way that's, I'm not, what, do you think I'm trying to make some kind of scientific... Well, stop playing the here? victim. Stop playing the victim. We've got about half an hour left on this live stream. I hope you're all enjoying the carnage that has been this show. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside the show while it's live and a link in the info box once the video has rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the panel, simply mute the page you are currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the discussion and express your views on the shape of the Earth. Please don't swear please don't spam the chat feed and uh, yeah please also share the show as this increases the chances of a more diverse panel one last time if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate as i say there is about 30 minutes left on this live stream that should be a clue a clue of what that i'm wrong or so if, if your family doesn't agree with all your opinions then you should uh you should change them? What, was that, is that your argument? If your family is unwilling to support you in your life, you should question your choices. Well, my family is willing to support me in my life. I mean, I just don't engage them on, on topics that um, they're not uh, invested in already. I realize that this, this whole kind of conspiracy okay. subject isn't for everyone, you know? It's not for the faint of heart. All right, so what do you kind of... What are you trying to show, Morty? Oh, am I being presented? No. What do you want to present? Uh, just some footage. It's not mine. I just want to get some... Uh, yeah, don't oh, do it. It's kind of aimed at Flat Earthers mainly, just to get your thoughts yeah. on it. See what you what? think. See if you saw it. I'm what sure you've already seen it, but I'd still like to bring it up in here. What is it? Is exactly? that sound like? Yeah. It's uh, uh, he, Lake he has permission to elevate. You can okay, play this. Go ahead. Nathan. All right. Yeah, you presented. Go ahead. There's a refraction line, as you can see. It's flat half. I was hoping Sleeping Warrior would be in here, because I'd like to hear what he has to say about this. I, here, I he, here he has commented. He just says that it proves that the Earth is flat. He's just an idiot. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it does. I don't really understand that. I am here. What is it I can help you with? Well, I'm presenting a, a video of Soundly's. I just like to get maybe the you drone or uh, Nathan Oakley's thoughts on it. Um, I can't see it because I'm not. If I have the Skype call in voice, I can't have. Hang on, let me just, I can't see what you're referring yeah, to. I saw it. it. It was pretty good footage, and it proved indeed that there is this zone, a slant zone, and after that goes on in a straight line. Oh, yeah, I know what you're referring to. It's pretty good. What oh, about, like, that is that, just if that evidence of the Earth being curved, curve or would you Very suddenly so, stopping. So, hang on, let me, let me ask a question. Uh, who's the guy that's presenting? What's your name? Oh, my name's Sean. So, can you see that the point where the obstruction like makes the thing that we're looking at disappear on the horizon? The what? Say that again. The point where the things that we're looking at on the horizon, can you see the point where the things begin to disappear? Can you see that point? Yeah. Yeah. What, what word would you use? What adjective would you use to describe that 
effect. Uh, distortion, blurred. Oh, great. Okay, effect. so I'm, I'm glad you didn't say curvature at that point because there is evidence that there is an inferior, and I'll quote Sly Sparkane's words, uh, an inferior mirage that appears to the observer as obstruction. Would you agree with those words? I, I don't see why not. I, I agree with them. Um, but if this supports that we live on a ball, then the, it should be the curvature of the Earth that's what is making things disappear. Correct? You mean it can't be both? <clears throat> but is there any evidence of both? Yeah, look at how much of that building there to the left is blocked by that distortion layer and how much more of it would be required by the curvature. Well, how much uh, obstruction that we can see called the inferior mirage is in the why, picture? How, why is how do height we, doing this much? The how change in height, how, how is it doing is? that much? Especially when well, you're that island more there, way air over air in the distance, in it, it doesn't seem to drop very fast. So... Is this why See, you and Nathan don't like, take uh, like observations science, from it, 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 low down? Is this why thing, yeah. you go here's higher up? Be able to see it, that at all. Here's the thing. It would be um, hidden behind the curvature, and it's not. You can there's still only see one, it. Here's the yes. thing. There's only one thing that we can prove in the image. The other one is inferred, and we can't prove it because we can't see it. The thing we can prove is mirage. The thing we can't prove is curvature. Why does the mirage end up blocking the majority of the building. Are you a hologram fantasist? Who? Oh, oh, I love sleeping holograms. Warrior. It falls down into the refraction zone, yeah. that's why. But as oh, the, the motion zone. there proves, you can see those hills very far away. You should never be able to see them, ever. But you can. And the way they drop Where's as the, the camera chair? goes up there proves it is. that it, it's not really curved. It's not really behind the curve. The curve, it's not curved. The actual, <laughs> the thing that looks like a curve well, is much closer. Here's the thing, though. Oh, it just see, looks like a curve. It's not a the, curve. Okay. We see that the obstruction at the horizon is mirage. We see that it's upside down and it's mirage. We see that, and that's not disputed, right? We can prove that. But can we prove curvature? Yeah, you can do it by going on a day where that miraging effect, that refraction effect is as minimal as possible. And you still get a similar amount of blockage. Not the same amount, but close. Right. But so let me ask you this, again, sleeping... I'll, I'll, I'll re-ask the question. Dorcas. That didn't hey, Dorcas. Some... Hey, I'm just I'm wondering. If he goes on several different days where there's better atmospheric conditions, would you concede on anything that it's not the superior mirage doing that? Well, you would have to evidence curvature that was doing it as well. And that's the bit that we struggle with. No, that's what we're saying is go over the course of a number of days to where atmospheric conditions vary. And you can actually get it to where the surface temperature and the air temperature are going to be so close that that mirage effect would be In a basin. negligible. Are you serious? Negligible. And you would you still serious? see. You think that you will get the um, the surface temperature Hello, the rumpus. Can be similar you hear to the water temperature Hello. in a basin? Hello. Reds has Hello. done it. Reds rhetoric had done it a couple years ago over uh, Tampa Bay. It's oh, not you mean an with, his, with his Big Ben's power do. station that showed that the Earth was flat? Is that what you're referring to? No, you think it's flat, but you also have your head up your ass. Well, I challenged Reds to go through that, and he didn't do it. He never did. And if he's out there listening, because I'd still go through that exact same thing. Like you. Big Ben's power station experiment that Reds did showed that the Earth was flat. It showed that inverted mirage and nothing more. There were also Therefore, it's flat. One. Give me a break, dude. Well, hang on. Let, let's, let's remind ourselves of the basic geometry of the Earth here. This is an observation over 16 miles, right? We've got observations at 30, 40, 50 plus. Is it? We see. Are we at seeing the curvature elevation? that you guys have claimed? Yeah, to your see? elevation did, plus did, you're did looking you get your at high right objects. Finally? So what's the elevation no. of this footage that we're looking at now? Um, I don't have the details on that. I don't. Okay, I, don't so know that, I don't. I don't so, have the telemetry either. But if you yeah, want, I know. So then I what's your argument? About, you think that this is taken from ground level? I don't think so. Well, no, that's well, exactly yeah. the point. <laughs> 
Okay, but you're, saying, you're saying that as, they... as your elevation increases, your visible distance also increases. Yeah, obviously. Unless there's that's something obstructing in both, in both it ways. in the far distance. That's how it works like on a flat hat. Clouds and such. Like, you can't see any further. Sorry, Spencer, can I just ask there. a quick question? So as we rise, should we see the horizon rise as well? Or no. Or this one, this seems to go and up. And it doesn't. The horizon seems to go up as we raise an altitude. See? No, it depends where you're pointing. Yeah, I think the camera is pointing down. If you pointed bit. straight ahead, the horizon would fall down. But it's going up. That's because they're pointing oh. at, he's pointing at the horizon. He's not pointing at zero degrees. He's not pointing at a tangent, a horizontal to where he is. He's looking down and he's changing what he's looking down as he goes up. Well, that's if he were to bad, remain looking straight horizontally, the horizon would fall down. Well, he isn't though, is he? No, so we can't really down. approve that assertion with this footage, can we? Well, he's, no, we can't tell because we don't know, but he is looking down. But you, we can't tell because we don't know what the camera angle is doing. But I can tell you it's changing its angle as he goes up. Well, without that information, then this evidence becomes... Uh, oh, what about this obvious curvature right here in this bridge? Yeah, but there's too much curvature as well. Like, it's only 16 oh, miles. too much? Well, this yeah. is yeah. a map to prove that. What was so now it, you're complaining miles? about too much curvature. Now you're complaining about too much curvature and you can complain <laughs> about not enough. Yeah, yeah. Much is the problem. Problem, yes, problematic, isn't it? When you can't get the curvature, curvature to stay is... consistent, as no, as too according too to the formula, it's, it's just problem. an optical effect. It's called refraction. Look, so when we go up into zone. space, we get very lots of curvature. Is that too much for you? So, what uh, exactly like, is the amount of curvature you want to see? The amount that would match the model. It does. Everything matches the model. No, this doesn't match. I mean, I absolutely no, matches does. it. You have to analyze it further, but this does not match the curvature absolutely of the model of everything. everything. That's absolutely. just an assertion yeah, that you Perfect have match. no evidence for. Nathan, can you share my well, screen? I'm Let sure me I can uh, know what I'm presenting. I mean, you're, you're yeah, just you should. with an image. And you I'm, should learn how to come up with evidence for your assertions. You should. Well, I, That's yeah, a good thing. Okay. You're, I, there you go. I would suggest you do the same. I'm So if, if it can be I'm not making assertions. No, listen, Tim. If it can be shown that that is too much curvature, more than would be predicted by the GLOBE model, then what do we do with that evidence? Will you throw out the evidence? What if honeybees could, you know, whatever? I mean, no, I'm just saying, what, what, if, if, what if, if... If someone is able to show that that is too much curvature, more than is predicted by the model... We will cross that road when that comes, if that comes. Right, no, but I'm I saying, do let's decide in advance what is we're going to do with that problem. evidence. Yes, yes, yes. if it was too much, it would be a problem, yes. Okay, okay, then we'll just leave it there. But it's not, okay, so we're following. So, well, no. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> if, I can, if it can be shown that it is, yeah, you, guys, shown, will reject, you guys will reject the evidence. It would be if it could be shown, but it won't be, so we don't have a problem. All right. Well, I'm just saying, you, you guys are on the record saying you'll throw out that evidence if that can be shown to be too much curvature. We won't throw out the evidence completely. Why would we do that? I'd like to present well, some that evidence. You'll throw it out as being too much curvature. That you won't gents, assert that it's proof of the globe if it's too much for the model. Gents, gents, I'd like to present some evidence that shows that it's way too much curve. Can you see my well, screen, gents? Well, the problem is, is that it conflicts with a lot of other evidence. So what you're, well, what you guys are trying to say is that this evidence is the best evidence because it matches the. Or Nobody it said that. that's another model. straw man you're doing. Nobody said that. Well, no, I'm no, just saying. The guy that showed I'm that sorry. evidence I'm just sorry. said, hey, what do you guys think about it? That's all that was said. Hey, hey, you're interrupting me. I'm saying that that's what's being inferred. You're, you guys are presenting this as proof of the globe, are you not? No, I'm not. Well, I'm saying that there's curvature there that cannot be explained well, on a flat okay. earth well, unless you want to go with that. Yeah. No, and I'm saying no, that it can too be much, explained on the flat earth with curvature. refraction. We've right. been doing so that a lot of times. You now. think it's too yeah, much. Any math. Show that it's too much well i'm saying Any modeling let's, anything i'm saying if i can yeah. show it let's decide what we're going to say about it afterwards now. no no how about you show it then we'll say naturally <laughs> no, what no, comes no, after same that. Principle. Right. if you so can you demonstrate the math exactly. says it's the wrong amount of curvature well we'll have a problem go away work out the maths and come back and we'll then discuss it but well, i'm not going to go away we'll just leave it no, we're, not the moment. we're not the moment so i'm not I mean, it didn't apply just now no but I'm saying, yes, if you could say it was too much curvature, the maths is it's inconsistent with the maths, we would have a problem. But I'm absolutely 100% confident you will not be able to show that, so it doesn't worry me in the slightest. Okay, gents, can you look at this uh, the, the share screen so that you can see what I've got on screen? 
Can you see? Can you see the towers? Yeah, you presented. This is a thirty-mile observation, right? It's double the distance of the Ponch train. It's done at night time when it's cold, and the surface area, uh, the surface temperature is similar to the water temperature. Might be a little bit different, but it's similar because um, there is no sun to keep the day warm. The sun is gone; it's cooler, so therefore the refraction is less. Right at that point, we can all agree: less refraction at night. Now, this is what the tower looks like, and at thirty miles away, that's what we can see. And you can see that there's a little love heart. You can't actually see it on this particular picture, but there's a little love heart lo located just above the roof here, and we see it in the picture. This is from 30 miles. It's double, right? This is what it's meant to look like on a curved Earth. So we've got the tippy tops of it, and according to Michael West, Mick West himself, that's all we should see. So if Soundly's evidence is curvature of the Earth, why have I not got the same? Am I still here? Yeah, you're still here. Where is everybody else? No, it's the same. It's the same thing. When you say something that is patently wrong, I want to question it. I'm going to stop you right there, so we can address a false claim. No, I'm saying now, like... now, Anthony. You said that just because it was at night that there was no refraction. I said Correct. minimal refraction, virtually none. That is an incorrect statement because you still can have a dramatic change between surface temperature and air temperature at night, still yeah. creating refraction. Yeah. Time of day does not matter. Sound is going. Sound is stuff is at night, isn't it? The stuff that he's got with refraction. In fact, his Some marriage. It, yeah. In fact, in fact, I've got two pictures of his uh, picture of the Marriott Hotel, which are done at night. One, it's uh, you can't see it at all. And the other one, it's hugely up. The variation is incredible. So, so we can. Um, in it any can. case, there's a, what I was saying before is there's a con, there's conflicting evidence. About there's no this. conflicting evidence. Uh, refraction confuses the things. I agree with that. But other than that, there's no conflicting evidence. Oh, well, that that's the con. That's that could be the source of the conflict, or it could be the shape of the Earth is the source. That's Riley, the Riley, what's your observation height? The elevation of that observation. It's no higher. It's no higher than twenty nine feet. Oh God, not this again. Yeah, it's not like you're twenty nine feet on that cliff, is it? Which turned out to be one hundred and ten. Yeah, yeah. Well, this we're, is on the, the we're on the beach, and the highest wait, tide we can get wait, is a nine meter the, tide. At the he's a liar. Location, he's a blatant liar, compulsive wasn't liar. The, wasn't the location so, of that let's, image? Let's, in let's address refraction. Do we all agree that the effects of refraction place? are negligible? Oh, it's on this. Neg I've, I've, um, well, I've got you, Anthony. I've got to put this neg negligible. You don't seem to understand that this paper is all about generating mirages, things that are upside down in wacky, wacky places. To them, negligible means it's not wacky and hugely, um, uh, in, uh, there's not a huge Historic. displacement. For the sort of thing we're doing, where we're measuring the tiniest of angles over 60 miles causes well, a 10 think, meter difference. I think what they're referencing that is not is, negligible is that... to us. But it's on the land with non-standard refraction that causes holiday, actual mirages, though, actual image displacement, point here, point there the standard oh, refraction oh, trying to make is negligible. Point but on a sea I'm surface, there is no non-standard refraction be because it doesn't get hot enough. And, and there it's I'm just gonna definitely make an not point. Let me negligible. You can... It's actually quite a lot. I would just like to finish my point, please. Right. So for us, when we're Don't dealing with people, please. 10 or 20 meters, that's that to us, 10 to 20 meters is ne not negligible. To these people who have got ships, they're trying to model ships being suspended in, in the air, 10 or 20 meters is not is absolutely nothing, not interest. They're not trying to model changes of 10 or 20 meters over 50 miles. When they're, they're in, trying to in the air, they're Rumpus, trying to change what would you, what would you, you know, describe that effect as, sort of Rumpus? Feet over when those miles. ships are in so the, the air, so, what do you so call that who, effect? So who, is it called so looming by any chance? Rumi? Is it called looming? When those ships are hovering in mid air, would you call that effect looming, Rumpus? Because that's what it's termed as. It's called looming. What's called looming? When things hover in the air. That's more serious than looming. I think that would be regarded as being beyond loom. Well, extreme looming. You'll call it extreme looming. So looming then. 
extreme looming. Uh, sorry, Let's so it has the word looming <laughs> in there, so I am correct. When things are hovering, they are looming. So it's an, a, a, a refractive effect. So it's a refractive effect we're talking about. A bit like the entire island that has absolutely no distortion on it whatsoever, but is also looming. Funny how these two effects have the exact same name, but one gets, an attribute, gets attributed this term extreme by the rumpus even though it is the exact same effect with the exact same word attributed. Looming. That's not looming. So, for instance, that's not looming, what you're just showing there. That yeah, we don't want to know what isn't looming. We, would, we want to know what is looming. And apparently when that's, things hover in the air, looming. that's looming. That's just like large. the mountain that has absolutely no distorted effects on it so, whatsoever, so this but is also looming. Here, Funny that. They're trying, to, they're trying to demonstrate how mirages work. That's extreme i think you'd have to accept and that's why yeah. they regard little bits <coughs> of looming as completely that's... negligible they're not interested in it they're involved Rumpus. they're interested in can we call this for the sake conditions. of the discussion can we call this non-standard refraction that's not ref that's that's ex those, this is extreme this is not another extreme of non-standard refraction so we've got extreme looming just like we hang have on, on no, the mountain that we see perfectly in looming. scale a, and we've got on, extreme on. refraction that's like non-standard non-standard non extreme they sound similar to me non-standard not extreme Non-stat extreme is a subset of non-standard. Can't you understand? So non-standard and extreme are in the same subset. So non-standard refraction. The thing that oh, is attributed to the entire yeah. Isle of Man, that is the same no, no, group bad, set no, no, as these things that are also the refractive effects. Is we that right? Funny how they have demonstrable standard effects on them, the but the Isle island man. doesn't. Funny that, isn't all it, Rumpus? All of the image of the Isle of Man is covered by standard refraction. We do not need non-standard refraction. Yeah, it's why, why, don't you guys, why don't you guys take observations near the water level in Isle of Man observations? We, we can answer the subject, that? are we, Tim? Can I get an sorry. answer of that? It's all right. I don't in mind holding Rumpus' toes to the fire. fire. It's Are fun. Yeah, I know you're here to defend him. Uh, can well, I get I, an I, answer of that? I think this shoreline thing's a bit of a wait, red herring. I want to talk a bit more about looming. It's funny. Okay, let's, let's, no, I'm happy to talk about looming. Well, there's obviously sinking on a flat earth, isn't there? No, no, looming. Try to keep up. Obstruction? What is obstruction? No, no, we're talking Things about that looming. Are not there. Try to keep up with the so conversation. You don't see them with a direct line of sight, Nathan? They're not there? Yeah, they're not there. Or are they there? They're not there, they're all looming. <laughs> Shouldn't they be there, though? Shouldn't they're, they they're not there. there. They're looming, my friend. They're not really there. They're sinking they're on looming. a flat Earth, I think. No direct lines of sight, unfortunately. Do you understand well, what a direct line of sight is, Tim? Whether you like it or not, none of it is Yeah, shut up, Rumpus. Do you know what a direct line of sight is, Tim? Because you don't have one on the globe, my friend. You don't have one. You don't All have the direct ends. line of sight of the beach on the Isle of Man, do you? Yeah, yeah. You don't have any direct lines of sight. You don't have that, do you? Where's it's your direct looming. line of sight on a flat earth on Isle of Man? You why don't why you have to go to high there. You guys you see to take things that are there. Why it's don't you take observations None of near it's the water? Really there. No direct lines of sight. Why? Because you're intellectually dishonest, Nathan? Because yeah, you've got this and presuppositional Riley, argument that things bend around the curve of the Earth with non-standard refraction. That there's no observations is near the water. That's called the a presuppositional no. argument, Tim. You know what one of them is, don't you, buddy? You know what a presuppositional argument is? One that presupposes the outcome? Yeah? Like non-standard refraction. That's a presupposed argument. Yeah? Begging the question? You understand all of these things, don't you, Tim? Well, non-standard refraction falls into that category. Yet when we have demonstrable examples of non-standard refraction, they do all kinds of, what was the word Rumpus uses? Extreme things. Yet in the examples that you use, in the presuppositional argument that light is bending around the curve of the Earth, 76R, well, we have no demonstrable effects. We just have to accept, as you put it, things that are there, aren't really there because we can't see them there's no direct lines of sight things are blocked by earth curve even if we do see them non-standard refraction hyena to the rescue we don't need non-standard oh, right. you need got a direct line of sight with the lighthouse have you rumpus standard, yeah, yeah standard once we got your actual perfect. elevation you got a direct line of sight with the fits. lighthouse standard refraction have you got a direct fits. line of sight you just said you don't, you don't need, need non-standard refraction. Refraction. refraction so have you got a direct line of sight with the lighthouse 
we have a refracted line of sight. So you don't it. have a direct line of sight, exactly as I asserted. Line. This is a fun but game. I can play this all day. Occurring, fun, fun, fun. Talking about looming and other nonsensical there. things that these globers all believe in. Talking about their presupposed arguments that light bends around curves. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, yeah. Refraction is a fundamental part of looking through the atmosphere. They go to the highest point to take You show me some evidence that of this non-standard refraction that's not extreme in any way. It doesn't show me any Nathan extreme effects. Nathan just have to accept refraction. that it's there because it's part of your presuppositional argument. Are you argument. denying refraction, Nathan? Yeah, we do have refraction. Are we just you, don't have the presuppositional doing... version of refraction that bends light around a presupposed curve 76R. We don't have that kind of refraction because it doesn't oh, do, demonstrate do. any evidence it. of itself. Yes, we, we do, do. have yeah. we do have actual refraction, which tends to so make itself clear that, that it's actually occurring. Every That's what we do have. Built, or was built until GPS using that seven over six. It was standard thing. All the oh, opera, oh, uh, ordnance survey was done. Using yeah, that. you oh. like your stutter when you're Steve pinned to the wall. I like ho you're holding your toes to the fire. Fun, fun, fun. fun. Campus, you fall into his trap every time, dude. I know, and he starts no, stuttering, no, which is great for my audience rating. Right. Guys, 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 let's get back on topic, right? We were talking troll. about soundly. Let's, let's go back on topic. Let's talk about soundly and what is observation and whether it's supported or not supported by other observations. This is 30 miles. Riley, we Riley, see, why don't you take observations from near the water level? Can you answer me that? Why, why is there no observations from you guys? Why do you go to the highest points to take observations? Can you answer well, that like question? Like the one Ranty took from the water we you presented three horizon. days ago. It that did, one was in the water. Did, did you see the water? We saw the water. Did you not see that one? Try to keep up to date, Tim. No, no, I haven't been keeping up to date with the flat earth well, debate. Try but harder. I did watch about then 50 shows where you guys literally go to the highest points. Hit take the observation. bell notification icon, Tim. That's what you need to do, <laughs> my friend, to keep up with these arguments. Tim, Tim, I, I, oh, so, I, I don't think you should pursue this argument because I don't believe it's a good argument because there's so much refraction that occurs at lower levels. You exactly. don't think it's a good argument that no, they go to no. every freaking no. highest point How much to do observations, there? really? How much is so much? And then lie about the elevation. How much is so much? Really? So much that we don't see it. I love it. But, so but, much but refraction, the, we can't even see it. Just look, look Rumpus, if they're trying argument. to hold on, if seven, they're trying to map the curve or model the with the like flat earth, they wouldn't there. just go to one Anything highest on the elevation to do it's just so. There they would go to the bottom man. and try to figure out how to do it as well. Okay, Rumpus. Automatically there, whether or not you want to accept it. It's just bending stuff that you can see day in, day out around the curve of the earth, man. Just works. Seven six R. Just works, man. It's just there. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to like it. Just does it. Don't have to present any evidence for it happening. It just happens, man. Just bends around this curve we don't see to present things as a flat Earth observation. When you say you don't see the curve, Nathan, what do you mean by it? Do you mean the left to right? You mean the cross Show it me. You Show it me. Curve? Sorry? Is that what you mean? When you say there's no curve, do you mean to say left to right across your Yeah, I mean position? the Earth is no, flat, obviously no and observably. That's, That's what I mean. Well, no, I mean, things video, like lighthouses observe, that would be obscured curve. by Earth curve just are not. That's what I mean. Curve. Is that not being made clear amongst this debate you, process, you've just seen a video, both We think it's just flat, mate. Simple, simple, easy. Easy to understand straight lines of sight. None of this automatically assuming no that there's a curve. The the None of this assuming that there's light, light bending around that curve to account for things that we see and you can measure with straight lines. Simple. The like the people the who survey stuff, you know? Straight lines, simple they angles. Don't straight lines. Trig. Did you, did you, did you hear what Pooch just said? He said that you there are that. no straight lines in the atmosphere. All the lines are curved. He's so back light, on the light curves, thing, does yeah. it? Does light not travel in straight lines, Rumpus? Not in the atmosphere, no. <laughs> really? All right. Yes, so this is why let's, the let's, get, let's get back on. Let, let's get back on track. Can somebody explain to me why at double the distance we're not seeing the level of curvature that soundly shows? Well, I'd have to see what your observation height is. I'd have to know what the Blackpool elevation is, and I'd like to make sure what we're looking at. Because according, I remember I haven't been in this Blackpool debate. Geo uh, completely demolished your uh, uh, your line on the Blackpool tower. And he pointed. I think he discovered that you were looking at the wrong. You weren't allowing for the base of the tower or something, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can't remember the details because I haven't examined this myself. But um, well, perhaps you should re your, review it well, because well, the, and the, not the... just that is he was proven to be lying about the location he took the images really? from. Really? Oh God. Well, that was the beginning the thing. of the lively moniker. Anthony, you've just got to stop doing this. You... So this is the actual evidence, the actual photograph. And if we click on the properties of it, we can see that when we go into the details of it, we can see that the, um, let's see, I hope it's there. There we go. 
the GPS data was recorded. And when you put that into Google Earth, which I'm not going to do, but it takes you to here. So I don't see how there's a yeah. lie here. Can you yeah. show me what the lie is? On okay, well, I don't know. So, I mean, I'm just going yeah. on what Jared's been saying. But... Did you get your CPC yet? No, sorry, let's sorry there's been an assertion so that he lied by you, yeah. Jared. So you've just asserted categorically that he lied about his location. So let's it, go from there. Let's not change the subject. It's been demonstrated by multiple people on multiple occasions. Anthony has a problem with... Uh, not multiple honesty. people. You have just asserted it on this show. So, Jared, he's just shown the metadata with GPS locations. Are you going to retract your nonsense bullshit? Or are you going to keep asserting that other are people have asserted that you aren't bullshit? here to back up your nonsense? Are you going to retract your bullshit? I'll retract mine if you retract yours. Specifically, now, you have just asserted something within <laughs> seconds of this conversation. Let's not try and sidetrack me with I some other nonsense. I will retract my bullshit when you retract yours. So, are you not going to retract your retract shite about him being lying yours. about his location? I will retract my bullshit when you retract yours. Right. Let, let, Either you retract your statement you know, or get the hell out of my hangout, you piece of shit. Why don't we produce it? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in love, but I mean, wouldn't it be better to just demonstrate you've got the evidence? Get, give me a few minutes. I'm, dem yeah, I'm demonstrating it right now. It looks like the problem. You annoyed me twice in my own hangout, telling me how to run my show. Now he won't retract his nonsense bullshit. Telling me to yeah. retract mine first. How dare you, piece of shit. Get out. <laughs> Bye. Anyway, so here's the evidence of where I actually was. Would you like me to manually type it in, or would you trust me that it is where I say it is? Well, I don't know anything about this, so I'm, I, don't, I can't comment He's on this. He's telling you now, <laughs> dipshit. Pay attention. All He's you telling you know, right now. All you need to know, Rumpus, is this is what we should see on a curved earth, according to Mick West's calculator, and Mick West gave it me himself. This is what we actually see, and this is at 30 miles. It's double the distance of Soundly. So if we're seeing the curvature of the Earth on Soundly's, why are we not seeing double, like, somewhat similar on mine? Is it that I've got bendy light bullshit, or is it that something else is happening? The horizon's at that red blob. Do we know what that red blob is? We do. You sure about that? Because as I understand, uh, from the, what I have, the brief analysis I've been offered, it suggests you got that wrong, whatever that red blob was, and you got it in the wrong place. Okay. In fact, looking so, at the what about the rest of the tower? Yeah, I mean, I can't do an analysis immediately, but that, obviously, where that red blob's on the horizon, I mean, I don't know if that's the. So, the, you're saying it's 30 miles, did you say? The 30 miles. Yeah, 30 miles. And let's open it with um, paint so we can scribble on it. And I'll show you what it's meant to look like, Bumpus, because um, I'll, I'll make it easy for you, because it's. I can understand that if you're coming into this blind, it's, it's not going to be straightforward for you. But basically, Let's um, get my scribe tool, and uh, in fact, actually, I'll just do snipping tool. So if I just, while you're doing that, I'll do a quick check on the. You said it's thirty miles. Did you say for the for this thing? Okay, I'll see what the drop is on that. I've got the hidden on that. Sorry. Yeah, I've got a great deal of time. About sixty seconds left, I'm afraid. Okay, thirty miles, and you say the observer height is what? 29, 27, 29. Uh, so that divide that by three, so make that nine meters. Okay, you should have an obscured of 90 meters. Sure. Now it's a 518 feet, so flick it over into Imperial. Uh, 90 meters is uh, what? Uh, the, God, um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, that's 297 feet obscured. Right, and it's a 518 foot tower. So that should leave um, 212 feet visible. Which is right the way down to the base, the, the entrance for the pedestrians. Uh, the, well, the hold, on, hold on, the red blob there is clearly the horizon. So we don't need, we can't see that, we can't see below the red blob, we can't see the entrance. Well, the, the, the tower it sits on isn't lit. Or the block it sits on isn't lit. But we've only got 60 seconds. But I'd encourage you to try and find out why this is the way it is, if we live on a ball the size that soundly shows it. Because that was the point that was being made, and I'm showing that that's not consistent with what we see. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for mostly tuning in and hopefully sharing the show. And of course, a massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. Thank you to Dank as well for dropping $5 in the super chat. Thank you very much indeed. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.